Another important thing to have in mind is the hearing threshold in quiet. So on top of our signal adaptive masking threshold, we also have the threshold in quiet. An approximation formula of this uh, masking threshold can be found in the Digital Audio Signal Processing book by Zoltza. And is for the case of quiet and only a barely audible test tone. So the approximation for this level of threshold in quiet, the LTQ in dB and in Python is given by this equation here. And we can plot this with Python and this is what we're looking here. So here we have the frequency in Hertz. Here we have the dB and here we have the approximation function of a masking threshold in quiet. So have in mind that this is an approximation function, so it's not perfect. We've seen before that this, this threshold in quiet changes with age, it changes for different people, but we can use this approximation for obtaining very good results in many different applications. So the dB of the formula is for sound pressure. Our internal representation has a plus or minus 1 as full scale, which corresponds to 0 dB. So assume we play back our audio signal such that the full scale appears at the sound level of speech, which is about 60 dB. So therefore, we need to convert the sound level to our internal representation, and we need to reduce the threshold of quiet by 60 dB. Even we with an audio signal, the masking threshold in quiet still matters at the lowest and the highest frequency. And we can see here. We combine the signal dependent masking threshold and the threshold in quiet by taking the maximum of the two at each frequency. So this is the idea. We will have the depending the signal dependent masking threshold. We also have the threshold in quiet and we'll combine them by taking the maximum of the two at each frequency. In Python, we clip the results to avoid overloading and numerical problems and to uh, correct our masking threshold using this function here to clip. And also here we are shifting the dB according to our internal representation. We can test our approximation formula for our hearing threshold in quiet by producing noise that is below this spectral threshold and then listening to it. So if we don't hear the noise, it means that it's a good approximation. We can use a Python function that we, we're calling noise from dB spectrum that is given here. This function will produce noise according to dB spectrum given in spec. That is one of the arguments of the function. So we will produce blocks of sound and we will um, generate noise in the range of minus and plus one and then we will multiply with a noise, uh, multiply noise with the spectrum. So have in mind also that because we are generating uh, noise using these blocks, we can also expect to hear artifacts and to hear uh, some clicks. So even if it would be completely silent, we will still would hear some clicks that is due to this way how we are generating um, the noise signal. So this is a simple way. We just want to demonstrate our idea. So bear, have in mind that this can happen and you can, even if it, you should expect complete silence, this is not a noise uh, from something else. If you hear some clicks, is the artifacts generating when we uh, append these blocks, how we are doing here in this for loop. So the idea of what we are going to do is that we are going to generate noise. First, we will generate white noise. And as we know, white noise has a flat frequency spectrum. And then we are going to listen to this. And next, we are going to generate a noise, but with a shape that is according to the threshold in quiet. So basically the noise power from the white noise and from this shaped 
noise should be approximately the same. It will still look like noise if we see in the time domain, but in the frequency domain, the white noise has a flat spectrum and our generated noise based on the um, uh, threshold in quiet will have the shape of the threshold in quiet. And the idea is that if it's we generate something that is below the threshold in quiet, we should not hear it. So this is what we are doing here. So we are generating uh, noise. We are going to use a sampling frequency of 32 kilohertz. We'll have for our formulas that we calculated before and for generating this noise, we are going to use this um, 1024 subbands. And then we will have the spectrum in dB sound level of 60 dB, which is approximately the, the speaking level. So what we are doing here is we are generating noise and it should be a white noise with um, flat in frequency. And this is the magnitude spectrum of the noise. And here how it looks in time domain. So you see that it really looks like noise. And when we play it back, it also sounds like noise. It sounds like a white noise. So here, this is because we have this ones. Yeah, so for all the subbands, and we have this flat, flat um, frequency response. And we see here that the, how we generate the noise, we have this um, spectrum that it takes this spec here, which here in this case is ones. And therefore, it will take an inverse FFT here, and then it will generate this noise. And this noise should be according to the frequency response that we define. And we are defining it to be flat. And this is what we listen. But now, we are not going to have a flat frequency response. We will generate a noise that has the same shape as the threshold in quiet. And here is the formula for the threshold in quiet. So if we look back here, this is what we showed here, the level of threshold in quiet. And this is what we are using now. So this is passed into our noise from the B spectrum that generates the noise. And then here is the noise magnitude spectrum. So we can see that it's very different from the flat, what we generated before. And here there is the same shape as the noise in quiet. There is a difference here because as you can see here, we are on a semi-log here in this axis. And here we are not on the semi-log. So here is linear. And this is why you can see the difference on the this uh, magnitude spectrum. So have in mind that they are the same. However, this x-axis has a different scaling. Yeah, this is in this is linear, and this is same log. Okay, so now when we generate, we can also listen to this generated noise. So, apart from the clicks that are artifacts produced by the blocks the, in the way that we are constructing this noise, we hear almost silence. There's still a bit of noise in the background. Yeah, this is not perfect approximation. And, um, but we see that it really looks like noise in the time domain. So we cannot see so much difference apart from some amplitude, but their magnitude spectrum, they look completely different. This is flat. This should be white noise. And this has the same shape and the same characteristics of the threshold in quiet. And when we listen to it, so try, try to ignore the clicks 
and we see that indeed it works. The idea is everything which is below this um, level of threshold in quiet, we should not hear it. This is a, a special phenomena of our hearing, the way our hearing system is designed. And we see that, in fact, it works. Observe that the, the white noise has a flat spectrum and it's clearly audible, but the noise shaped according to a threshold approximation is almost inaudible if we don't consider the clicks that they are artifacts uh, by the blocks used to generate the audio. The way how we construct it is not the best way, but just for a simple demonstration, we have here this um, for loop and we have indeed seen what happens, um, the effects of the threshold in quiet.